Electric Lodge presents Notes from the Underground with Josh Berkowitz, where we talk to alternative storytellers, comedians, dancers, musicians, poets, and filmmakers about life, art, and we may just talk about nothing at all. Recorded live from Soul Journey Studios in Venice Beach, California. All right, yeah, you, yeah, we're we're here with 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 that. Yeah, that's this is notes on the underground, uh, notes from the underground. We have Paul Sand here today, Tony Award winner Paul Sand. I can't believe it. We just started this thing one week ago, but we're getting off to a good start here. So, uh, well, welcome, um, and I'm I'm just honored to to have you here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, I'm I'm particularly happy you're here. I mean. <laughs> You just kind of uh, um, found your way over to the Electric Lodge uh, a few weeks ago, and I had I had heard you were here, and I said uh, I'm I'm very curious about this guy. And you and I started to get to know each other over the last three four weeks, and uh, you know I've been doing a little bit of research, but I've been mostly getting to enjoy our conversations, which has been nice, and your perspective on the world. So we could go a number of uh, directions in this conversation. In any direction. Any direction. Yeah. Well, we can talk about it. There was something I noticed that was very, uh, um, God, there was something before we get into your history, which I do want to talk about. One of the first things that when you and I were taking Joseph Culp's walking theater class, uh, just the way you commented on when I had gotten up there and, and was doing my performing or my ritual or my walk, uh, and I was dealing with um, a lot of issues of fluidity and manipulation and things like that. And you had said some. You had talked about the terrible twos, and I noticed very quickly how interested you were in the terrible twos. And I think I've heard you bring it up many times since then. Yeah, I, I like the terrible twos, <laughs> and at my best, I'm in the terrible twos. Mm. Because it's I, th I what do, I'm not a, a psychologist or. But I think it's like the first sign of somebody fighting for their identity and what they want. And then they spend years with the parents trying to talk them out of it. <laughs> and then they spend years, if they're lucky, if they can afford it in therapy to try to find themselves again. Or if they're lucky enough to have teachers along the way that allow them to uh, find them, uh, how you say, be yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a parent is a guide. Do mm -hmm. not, shouldn't push a child around, right? And uh, just you know, make sure they don't bump into things, and make sure they're <laughs> fed and get enough sleep. But they, let them, let them, let them be. Let them discover what they are. Enjoy themselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's actually a great place to start. We'll start from the age of two. Or, or you, you were born here in Santa Monica, right? I was. You it, near the pier, or was uh, it? Uh, you uh, actually born in Chinatown. Oh wow! At the French wow. Hospital, but I, I grew up. I grew up in Santa Monica. Every summer, my folks would get a little dump, and we would like live in it. You know, it was really <laughs> a shack. But in, just in, for the summer, for the right, summer, right? Yeah, in we Santa lived Monica. In, we lived in Silver Lake all the time. I went to John Marshall High School. So. But um, yeah, so we're lucky enough to just sort of hang out at the beach all summer, forever. <laughs> and now I live there. Right, right by the beach, yeah. Uh, on the beach, and I look at the pier. That's where I learned how to walk, was on the pier, as an infant. <laughs> I lived there on the pier out of high school with Joan Rose. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's another story. But anyway... Right. We, have, we have a ton of different... I'm, I'm like... I'm like listening very closely right now because I'm like, okay, we could go in so many different directions. We could talk about Viola Spolin. We could talk about Marceau Marceau. You we could talk about anything. Judy Garland. You can do anything. You can do it. I'm, I'm like, which road? Yeah, so uh, Viola Spolin, I had heard something that you had started with her at the age of 11. Is that true? Or very nine, young? Nine. 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 Jesus. Yeah. Well, I had these folks who, uh, I think because they were not allowed to follow their dreams made it a point for my brother and I to follow ours. Oh, that's very nice I of mean, them what at that luck. period of time, what actually. Luck. Yeah. Right, and so I could go and knock on their bedroom door, and I could say, I want to take piano lessons, and they say, okay. <laughs> or I want to do this. And then I saw a play when I was a kid. They took us to the opera and the play and ballet all the time. I saw a play that was all in blue light. 
Hmm. I don't know the name of it, but it was all, and I said, that's it for me. I want to be an actor. I want to be a director. I uh, like blue light. And then I knocked on the door. I said, can I? And they said, yes. And they found Viola Spolin by going to UCLA and saying, who's a great teacher for kids who won't turn them into crazy people? <laughs> and and so they said, this lady, Viola Spolin. And uh, my folks and Viola got me a scholarship because there wasn't any money in the right. family. Um and I worked with her and grew up with her from nine until 18, ran off to Paris, knocked on Marcel Marceau's door <laughs> at Viola's suggestion. Oh, at Viola. <laughs> with, yeah, from worked. Viola to Marceau Marceau. Yeah. So, so mm. I mean, I know about Marceau Marceau in very broad strokes. Could you tell us, well, I mean, I guess first to Viola as well, uh, just staying there for a moment. Who who were these people from your point of view? Who were they? Uh, uh, lucky to have such guides. <laughs> Shit, Viola especially. <laughs> she just. Are you kidding? You just do this if you want, and do not lie. Whether you're on the stage or sitting next to somebody, <laughs> just don't bother. The truth is much more interesting. Yeah, and it it always is, and so. She was a fantastic guide, and she had techniques, which are the theater games, basically, that she invented with all of us kids. Mm. She had this company called the Young Actors Company, and she invented all her uh, Viola Spolin games on this little batch of kids that I was uh, part of. Um, yeah, So I worked with her for years and years, and then joined Second City, which her son ran paul sills was this the yeah. amazing and you could use the word incomparable yeah <laughs> with the, yeah this guy and i worked with him forever and it was the best the best work i've the best time i've ever had right working, we, yeah. well just to jump forward for a second what we'll come back to is in 1971 paul sills story theater was where you got the tony was yeah what was that paul sills story theater? oh grimm's fairy tales and uh and it was not improvised. Uh, the, all everybody, the Broadway critics, everybody thought how great they're improvising these Grimm's fairy tales. We weren't improvising them. We learned the lines and just did them. But with their technique, it's not like watching a play with a lot of dead people walking around talking. You know what I mean? This yeah. is like it's like Hamlet said it. It's trippingly off the tongue. Don't right. You know, and just live and see each other it's like it's like a basketball game we were always taught you always play together you're not against each other right you were saying that to me the other yeah, day that's, too it's my main thing yeah one of my main things right right so that's so viola yeah i'm really lucky to have had viola in my life mm. and uh and that and my great mom who like found viola and Maybe the deal you could be, uh, you could study, but you cannot be a child actor. That was the deal. Okay, I said I don't want to be a child actor <laughs> anyway. I just want to. Uh, and so that. Yeah, that was well, and so so you went to after. Uh, uh, when when did you mo you move to France for? A I little did. Bit? I wanted to get out of the house. <laughs> you know, I was yeah, still right. in the, the, my late terrible twos. <laughs> yeah. So move this up a little bit. Oh. oh. Okay. Is it good? Yeah. We're, there's a mic, drooping mic. Here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, we got it. Right. Oh, okay. yeah, that'll work. So, yeah. uh, I wanted to get out of the house. San Francisco was not too close. New York was too close. And I was kind of French crazy anyway. I had a wonderful gay girlfriend named Vicky. And she was flawless and... Uh, so we were going to go to Mexico and then we didn't. And then I saw Marcel Marceau perform here and I thought that'll work. <laughs> I don't have to know the language. And, yeah. And just, right. It's all yeah. Mime, yeah. So it was always, it wasn't when people were, when they're acting, when the, what they're talking about is so interesting. It's what happens in between the sentence when they're living or mm. supposed to be mm -hmm. living. Mm -hmm. And that was the magic to me. So I thought I'd go to France not talk for a year and just 
try to get get back to myself. You yeah. just gave me a good plan. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, right. Because I'm always like, I want to go to another country, but I just don't know. I don't have time to l- learn the language. Don't beforehand. bother. You know, you don't bother <laughs> because you catch on. Yeah, and then you somehow you communicate right. beautifully. You get yourself right. in beautiful trouble by n- not knowing the language. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Was that do you want more viola? Oh well, oh my God, I, we could talk about either yeah. of those forever. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 I we'll, we'll jump between the history and then also philosophy. There was something uh, we ran into each other at a show last week, which was wonderful, and then we were going to see each other the next mm. day. And you were talking about, oh, I could, I could go even, I could see that going even bigger or more. You know, what, what's that attraction for you? There's a, there's a looseness to. Uh, uh, there seems to be some sort of flexibility to what you like, or you were saying to me the other day, intuition's a big thing for you. It's everything. Yeah. I mean, you know who the other guy who said intuition is everything? Who's that? Uh, Albert Einstein. <laughs> well, well, there you go, from, uh, from the scientist himself, Right, eh? so <laughs> he said, without it, you're dead. And it's really true. <laughs> you just got to, like, pay attention, you know? So, but, uh, well, yeah. yeah. What is intuition? I was asking somebody that uh, last You know, week. I asked someone a great, I, that's a great question. Yeah. I said to a, a, a Jungian analyst, which I like to go to once in a while. Oh, yeah. And I said, how do you tell the difference between paranoia and intuition? You know? Yeah, yeah. Because that's, you know, and so, you know, well, that's easy. You know, paranoia comes out at you through a jagged, uh, and intuition just sort of flows, Mm -hmm. you know, more liquid, Mm -hmm. flows Mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. And there's a softer message. Mm -hmm. Paranoia is... But then again, I had this friend, a brilliant actress, who'd go into crazy houses every so often, and she came out once, and she said, well, I learned one thing. And I said, what's that? And she said, paranoia is based on fact. Oh. I know. So there's only, of course, she's crazy, so it's hard yeah. to, you know, but it's, there is a seed there. Or then as you get into projection and then you say someone's doing this or saying you really want them to do it to them. And it's very interesting and complicated and wonderful to watch on the stage or the screen. Mm. Um, I got off the track. I'm sorry. No, I, we could just, we yeah. could go wherever we want. Um, <laughs> like we keep saying. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was we, talking to you about big, about the size of things. Because oh, I too, oh, yeah, right, with Asher right, Hartman. Right, right. And we were seeing this guy do this wonderful stuff where he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and, and both you and I were attracted to things like that and say, oh my God, I could have seen even more of, of yeah, that vibe yeah. on stage. Yeah, well, I noticed he, well, Asher Hartman is a brilliant, brilliant artist. B- brilliant. And, uh, we don't do anything alike. And she even said, I'm glad we don't work alike. <laughs> right, right, right. But, yeah, because, right so, but what she does is pristine, and I love it. But if I was going to direct that guy, I noticed he was a large man, looked like sort of a big gangster. Yeah, right. But he moved fantastically. <laughs> and then he, has had to, he would sing once in a while. It was beautiful. And I kind of wanted to, if I were to do it, wanted to, Let's see more of that interesting ancient movement that he does yeah. and hear that awkward singing, which is completely on key. Um, <laughs> I would want to, and then I think I would get his story closer to wh- what I would like. Uh-huh. But I really want to say Asher knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. And oh, it's. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it was perfect. Well, what was exciting about that event? Well, I saw you, and then I, I and then I ran into some other people who were running different spaces around town. Um, uh, automata, uh, a woman named Janie Geyser, I think, was there. Uh, um, I, I don't know if that's the proper spelling of her last name. And then a guy named Brian Getnick from Pam Residencies. I was there representing Electric Lodge, and we were all up in this warehouse at this art gallery in downtown, which I'm going back to again this Sunday. I had mm. never been there before. Mm. Hauser, Worth, and Schimmel. And what was exciting was you were there too, and I, I kind of realized, wow, there really is an underground, uh, I mean, and you've, been, you've been above ground many a time, but there's a scene uh, uh, for this kind of uh, a little bit offbeat theater style. I don't know what you would call it. But do, do, do you feel that here in L.A. at all? Probably not enough, 
I'm sure, but it's rare to find honest offbeat theater. Mm. You see a lot of fake mm. offbeat theater or people that aren't ready yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's good place to play around. But it's very rare to see like a solid, uh, what you call offbeat production. But there's some people like Asher who can do it. And it's, it's, it's beautiful to watch. And I liked it as in an art gallery. Yeah, it was in yeah. like the attic, an attic. Uh, of an art gallery, yeah. but really, but also felt like a warehouse. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And and you're big on different spaces and using spaces in interesting ways. Yeah. You're finding interesting, but you've yeah. used merry-go-rounds at uh, uh, the Santa Monica Pier. Yeah, well, we're going to do that next. But we used, uh, we did do a, some Kurt Weil and Brecht on the pier uh, a while back. We had a, a band and couple of beautiful women singers and <laughs> yeah. myself and Saul Mason, a brilliant guy yeah. from Australia. Uh -huh. um, uh, so, yeah. So, the, uh, yeah. And next I want to do something. Uh, in, I won't say where it is, but I just want to do it there. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I like that. That mm -hmm. sounds great in itself. I got something. I'll do it there, right? Yeah. Um, yeah well, so you did. You did Brecht. It was. Was it a Brecht play or was no? It, it wasn't a play at all. It was just. It was sort of like Kurt Weill's greatest hits. Uh -huh. You know, and I just thought the pier with its honky tonk atmosphere um, would be a great place for two, mm -hmm. a few people to sing some Brecht and Weill uh, songs all about revenge. <laughs> and murder yeah. and broken hearts and i got this brilliant cast you know yeah. uh, right shay a star uh megan rippy megan rippy who i know who did a film of mine several years ago uh uh experimental film i mean i you know i don't know if she ended up loving the end result of it but we had a great time i met her at a performance art event that had holly hughes and um tim miller uh -huh. there who i was Holly Hughes was was Holly Hughes and Tim Miller are kind of like my performance art mother and father, you know, in in that they encouraged me to go off the beaten path. And you know, Holly Hughes always talked about owning things, and Tim Miller always talked about ha taking a big bite. Uh, and you and I are recently discussing, you know, theater, and I'm getting back into text. Uh, I'm trying to find a way, though, to because something Tim Miller said at a workshop I did a, a while ago at Highways Performance Space. He said, you know, you, you could take a bigger bite or you could go and do scene study in a class. <laughs> so so finding how how do you think it is? And we'll, we'll probably be exploring this together a bit over the next while is how to have text, have a play like the wonderful Eugene O'Neill Long Day's Journey into Night play i saw last night or or a tennessee williams plays but to take a big bite out of it like like a really high quality avant-garde artist would do or a real true innovator would do what do you what do you think is that uh, uh having both uh a, a real theater <laughs> real it should be i like i like a story or i like pure abstract but i like it it's got Pure is the important word. Yeah, what do you, what do you mean by that? What yeah. I mean is not phony abstract uh -huh. or not somebody with no talent who's going to just <laughs> call it abstract. <laughs> right. Just right. somebody, you know. Um, yeah. Like we were talking about Long Day's Dirty and Tonight and and you liked it so much percent. Right. Well, that's 70. Not, yeah. yeah, it's not <laughs> it's fair. not enough. <laughs> it's not fair to the audience. Three hours and 20 minutes it's, for a 70% no, experience. You can't, yeah. no directors and actors and things all forget that they're there to knock the socks off an audience yeah and they're not there to indulge themselves it's yeah so it's a huge responsibility mm -hmm. so i have vowed to keep everybody awake awake right you mentioned that to yeah, me yesterday that's, yeah that's, right. that's, that's they can get their money back if right they, <laughs> If they, if they fall asleep <laughs> right so right it's the, we're but, just like we're a bunch of what uh traveling players really to you know right. entertain the townsfolk uh-huh and yeah. you know and go where you go with a fun dangerous body you know the real thing all the real stuff right. revenge right all the stuff we all feel and that's why theater has lasted so long we're mm. just like you know we are the mirror of uh, of what's going on in the world. 
Yeah, right. And you had said to me yesterday, uh, "Tripplingly off the tongue was yeah, a, was a term was Hamlet. from Hamlet." Yeah, yeah just stop <clears throat> all this acting stuff and just please say it trippingly off the tongue. Just be there, you know. <laughs> just be there and believe it. Make us believe it. Mm. Yeah, and then you have great lighting person and great mm -hmm. music, and then you got a show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you were saying yesterday, we were talking about just doing plays and rehearsing things, this project, that project. And I said, yeah, we could do this project. We could do this project. And we just work on you. And you were like, that sounds like a good life. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I, you, you seem like some, but I keep asking you like, oh yeah, you're doing well. You're, you're healthy. You don't, you didn't drink really ever. You didn't, no. you know, um, and, and you seem relatively like a happy person. I am relatively. Yeah. yeah. When I first met you, I wasn't because you, your uh, kind of neutral face isn't exactly like a smile. But when I listen to you talk, there's a joy in about everything you say and do. I mean, what? Oh, that's, yeah, that's yeah. nice. It's it's exciting. And but but I, I I guess you know what were some hard periods in in the span of your life where you're like where where you felt a little bit more despair? Would you say, or, or were there times like that? When I'd go through a bad love affair. Oh, yeah. That'll always do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about it. <laughs> yes. Any in particular that are notable? Oh, please. No, I, I, don't, I don't kiss and tell. Yeah, yeah, but otherwise, no, you go through periods where you hide from the landlord and all that stuff, you know? Oh, God. Or then you're riding around in limousines and, you know, it's just... It's like a Frank Sinatra song, you know. Yeah, the, no, but it's the, the yeah. That's that's all. I'm, I feel very happy to be um, well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, nothing weird. Right. So right, and your mother lived to ninety. Something? They lived a long time. You wow. Know? Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah, it's part of the yeah, family. But you know, you always get hit by a bus. But you, you have to. <laughs> be, yeah. And, yeah. yeah yeah when so i want to talk a bit about around the 1971 uh period where where you got a tony i mean was was that 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 must have been i mean obviously there was that you got this huge award but you know that was that a high point i mean you were working with paul sills which it sounds like yeah. was a huge joy for you yeah. where were you were you living in new york at the time i was at, at, well i was in rome because I ran away. I like to run away once in a while. Yeah, what do you, what's that moment before you run away? Because I've done that already. I mean, I'm late 20s now, but a few times in my early and mid-20s, I ran away. Yeah, uh, I do. that's about it. I, yeah, I just yeah. run away. For some reason, like, I'm, I want to get out of here, and I want to go to France, or I want to go to Rome. And somehow you've made the money. You, you're never in a rich way, you know what I mean? It's, you somehow do it. <laughs> I don't know how. Yeah. And you do it by yourself, which is right. even weirder. Right. And, and uh, so but then you meet you meet your people there somehow. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it happens. But and then you live and you L-O-V-E. And then you like that. But so I was there and Paul Sills said, we're doing this show in L.A. at the taper called uh, Story Theater. Do you want to come and do it? And... I said, yeah, I better get out of town because of L-O-V-E. And then, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so I went and did it. And yeah, we all played like about 11 different characters. And uh, it was Grimm's fairy tales. Um, and I, I basically, I, I played a dog. And I think that's basically what got me the award. <laughs> what, what was it about your? Because people have played dogs before, but I, I, I can already visualize very somewhere in my mind what like a, 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 an image of it of you doing this. But what was it that was so special about your? I didn't do anything. I just like me sitting here. It's like you know, uh, not, not in a dog suit or nothing, and yeah. just sort of you know. Very I was raised by a dog who was a. And who taught me how to bark when I was about seven, and we just we really communicated well, and they're pretty uh, fun creatures. Dogs. Oh my god, my dogs have saved my life. I mean, I have wiener dogs, you know, mm -hmm. the dachshunds. Mm -hmm. I have two of them over at my family's house, and I watch them. I I'll go and visit them every freaking day because it's 
the joy is unbelievable. It's yeah, I, I, yeah. They're 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 a great they're a great addition. Yeah, um, they never get sick of me. I never get sick of them. I mean, I get sick of them for a moment. I might get you know mm-hmm. tough with them, or they'll get you know they'll they'll get pushy with me. Mm-hmm. But every time I see them, it's the most exciting moment of the day, right? Yes. For that man, for me. Yeah, it's very, it's very nice. Yeah. yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, so yeah, I played the dog, and I knew because I could bark so well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I could bark very well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but it was yeah. So but you know, I played a prince and a a goose and a dog and a turkey and all kinds of things and. Uh, a bad guy, a good guy. It was a li- we all played eleven different characters. Mm-hmm. We a brilliant, yeah. a brilliant cast. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, but I think it was the dog that got me the award. Really. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Did, and was this over in New York? In New York, I mean, they do the Tony Awards in New York. Right? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I was on broad. It was on Broadway. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. I'm sorry. I, I left. I ran away from Rome because of. You know, I did this in, I was in New York and I ran away because of L-O-V-E. Uh-huh. I was with a Dominican woman who I still sometimes talk to and mm-hmm. she's wonderful. She's a beautiful, wonderful woman. And she had these, you know, amazing lips and the voice and the, you know, everything. And, but I went so crazy. Isn't that weird? I know. It's, it's something's wrong. It's something we haven't caught on to it. <laughs> I heard about a nomadic tribe, and we won't go into it now because it. <laughs> we might. Uh, they seem to have it down. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, it's the one where they travel around in a circle, over a hill and dale, in a circle, and the men on the outside of the ring are with the spears, and they kill the stuff. Yeah, and then the, the next ring are the women who skin the stuff, and then the next ring. Inside is the um, of the shamans, uh, the gay people, the artists, and then on the inside are the children. And so the children are being taken care of by this really arty group. Wow. And everyone else is busy. So it's not like, it, it seems in some way like an ideal situation. Yeah. You know what Where I mean? Where are these people? I, I... You just heard about it? No, or? it's it. I think it's Africa. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Africa, and it was a. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to go and do it. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to. Just you go, are. Man. I can tell when you're looking in your eye. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, tell me their address. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Well, so yeah. Anyway, what now? No, well, what? Yeah. Oh my God, we could go in a, a, a bunch more directions. Just uh, uh, maybe ten, fifteen more minutes here. Um. You you've worked with Judy Garland. You've worked with Carol Burnett. Oh yeah. Anything oh, notable about these types of people? Vivid, vivid life memories. Oh yeah. These are not simple women, <laughs> to, say, <laughs> to say the least. And they're, they're very perfectly intense. Yeah. And brilliantly talented. Right. So it's a nice combination. Right. Something it, about that personality, that tough personality can is what gets things done possibly. I've been it's, thinking about yeah, this recently. It's, it's, none of them even acted tough. They were extremely uh, they were very much no, they didn't act tough, you know, like an agent or something. Mm-hmm. But these are people who knew what they wanted and enjoyed Carol Burnett just loved it every second. Mm. She was like working with a kid, mm. like let's play show, mm. and mm. she'd laugh all the time. There was like the others were a bit more intense. Yeah, Judy Garland. That was pretty intense. <laughs> you you worked with her later in her life, or was very it? later yeah. in her life. Right. Yeah, and she was recreating a uh, like uh, she thought she'd do like a vaudeville tour. Right. Recreate, and we lived on trains. Yeah, and then we'd get off and go to some giant stadium, and then she'd do her act, and then I just did one number with her, the tramp number. We're a couple of swells, um, and then I'd watch her every night, and then we'd talk afterwards and hang out, and then meet on the train and <laughs> do it again. You know, <laughs> we never became pals, but right. she, 
She, now, into it, she was like psychic. Really? She, uh, we went to a fancy party in some mansion in Pasadena, and I'm standing next to her, and she says, I think we got to get out of here now. And I go, why? And she said, there's going to be a big fight. Holy crap. And so we start to leave, and then we start hearing bam, 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 and <laughs> pool tables and crashing, and, you know, so we got into a car. But she, she, was, she knew what was coming next, always. Wow. So I guess huh. yeah, she had a, yeah, well, you know, she was, she was, I, yeah, definitely genius material. Wow. Yeah, she had a hard time, you know, but a great time. Yeah, yeah. I wonder that kind of intuition, if that's built from just the life she had in terms of, you know, she had to build that because so many people, I'm sure, probably tried to take advantage or to 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 get a piece of her. And I think that eat. was constant. Yeah, it yeah. Had to be. But I have a feeling she was just born with it. You know, I've seen old black and white little movies where she's this little baby, and she's belting away and doing everything right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like she was. It was amazing. You know, oh I, I liked God. her. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I worked. Yeah, with all the funny ladies, I was their boyfriend. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was nice. Yeah, no, you're. Mm -hmm. it, it, that's it's like a typecast for you. Yeah, that <laughs> was my, that was boyfriend. my job. My job. <laughs> yeah, but it was. I uh, I liked it, and then you learn all the time. You know, mm -hmm. didn't you? Mm -hmm. I keep going to school. I keep taking lessons, and you just learn something amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you, do you have any advice for me? For you personally? Yeah. Or I guess for me personally, or, or, or people who oh. are kind of at the first quarter, you know, late 20s, yeah. first quarter of their life. Well, okay, I have some advice. I do. Um, because once in a while, I'll meet with some really young actors. And yeah, I, you, I mean, you, you know, tend to, I've, I've seen, you know, well, I know you work or you've. Um, you know, you worked with Saul Mason, and you know you. Yeah, work, you, and there's, there's a young, little group. Young people seem to enjoy it, it, being around yeah, you. Yeah, and and, uh, and they all kind of talk about fear and how terrified and stage fright and what do I do? And I'm so scared. And give me a secret. And uh, I just say to them, you'll never get over it. <laughs> <laughs> but do it anyway. Right, 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 right. I mean, that's what heroes do. And the old, you know, they were like, you know, just throwing spears at dragons, and, and they were scared. You know, they weren't cattle. Yeah. They were scared. And yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Yeah. In in this day and age, right now, with what we're going through, and I haven't even thought about it in the last uh, few days, but everything politically, you think we're going to be okay? <laughs> and you've <laughs> never you hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, I could be wrong, but basically, I think so. I think uh, I think the artists are good improvisers, and wow. we can see what's happening, and we use your instincts. And um, but I don't know how far the, these the crazies will go. Right. Really. Right. Um, right. But I I'm a bit optimistic. Uh -huh. You know. Um, Mm. But I'm, I remember some relative said to me when I was like a little kid, you just like to be in your own little world, don't you, Paul? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I'm not, I do my best and I donate when I can and mm -hmm. and I vote all the time, but mm -hmm. I do, I ain't going to give up what, my, right. my stuff right. because of some lunatic right right so it's not like you're gonna be you know that's what i'm struggling with but also knowing that i'm still being of service is you know i'm, I'm helping run this theater trying yeah. to lead the way with uh, you know what what i can do with an artistic movement as my piece of 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 this what's going on but i'm not you know more political now than i ever was but um it's like an artist, a uh, uh, eighty year old artist who lives up in Ventura now, John M. White. Uh, he was a performance artist too. He uh, he's like, you know what? It, where when I'm in the studio painting, it's where things make sense. I don't know if you have you what your version is of. Oh uh, well, yeah, no, it's like no. When I'm working, uh, that, that's I'm, I'm this there, 
I can work 20 hours a day and forget to have lunch, you know, <laughs> and, oh, they're going to pay me two, you know, mm -hmm. I get a paycheck besides. <laughs> and so it's, yeah, yeah, no, it's, we have to focus, we have to focus. Yeah. And, yeah, you have to, I mean, that's what I'm sensing with you as I get to know you is like, you have to do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's, yeah. I just came from a meeting with the guy on the business side of it right. all. Right. And uh, he was letting me know that he's uh, like a poet, really, and he's, but he does this business stuff to like help raise his kids. And uh, so I just said, don't give up your poet because it's not pretty if the artist gives up their creativity mm. for something. I said, take your kids along to the poetry readings, mm -hmm. you know? Take mm -hmm. them along. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll they'll be happy to go. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So just do it, even though you're scared. Do it. Do do your art, even if you're afraid. Do it if you have a husband or a wife who doesn't like it. Do it anyway. Don't give in. Just don't ever give up. I have a great friend. She just died. She was 105. Oh, shit. Sharp as a tack. Creative. Up until she had her last cheese enchilada and took a nap and, uh, you know, went wherever people go when they die. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, what do you, I mean, you, a lot of the people you know, I mean, you've seen, you know, I mean, you've seen people go over the years. I mean, especially more recently. I mean, have, have you? I mean, uh, a bit. I mean, yeah. what do you, how, do you, how do you deal with <clears throat> that? Isn't it it's funny? I know. I got an email from a friend asking me the same question. Hey, how do you feel about that? And it's uh, not a big deal. I I'm, I'm, I'm miss them mm. as pals. Mm. Um, but I, I don't know. You just, you just, I guess I'm selfish. <laughs> I just like to do what I like to do. Yeah, I just like I to have. Fun. I just like to have fun. <laughs> right, because when you, right. There was just a few things you and I our conversation because it's funny because the first time we sat down about a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about business, raising money, things like that. And then the other day, we were talking about plays and projects and the difference in our conversation. Is, <laughs> you and I were just both so much happier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were both like, and you were talking about, oh, isn't that sound like a good life? And oh, yeah. if my tail wags, then I'll do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's my sign. I could yeah. just tell. What makes your tail wag? In, in terms oh, of, in, I get it, so excited. Yeah, I just get about, so excited. Well, about what kind of things? I don't you, know. You've mentioned revenge a couple times, at least from a theatrical standpoint. Oh, yeah. It has nothing to do with revenge. <laughs> it's uh, If I read something... I know if I read something that that's really right for me, then I just start shaking all over, <laughs> and I and I can't wait, <laughs> and I just do it, and then it comes out brilliantly, just amazing. Yeah, you start shaking, right? Because it's like I, I have the body. The do body this, just right? shakes. You know, like, yeah. Ugh. You're, yeah. You have trouble sleeping ever? Or, or yeah. uh, I used to. And then I, I notice how important it is to sleep well. Right. Because I'm yeah. no good sleep deprived. Uh -huh. And then when I was really scared, when I was really young, I used to throw up all the time. Just randomly? like Well, not walking down the street, but I mean, <laughs> no, like stage fright before you go oh, on or right, something. Oh, right, 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 right. And, but then I noticed like towards the end of the second act, I have no more energy. So I thought, oh, I'm not going to throw up anymore because I need the energy. So you, <laughs> Get all hold it down. You, yeah, you just... You just yeah, you just keep going. You, you evolve. We all hopefully evolve. You know. I hope so. Yeah, I think. Yeah, there yeah. are distractions like L O V E and things. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to ask you. It sounds like that, and like fundraising, are like the two things that bother you the most. And otherwise, you're a pretty fucking happy guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, but it's weird because you're so happy. When you're in love, it's yeah. so. I mean, uh, right. Everybody listening well, do, to this yeah. knows that. Do you do you think though that love is also a drug similar to alcohol? Uh, you know, alcohol, it's a, it's it's a, food. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a mental illness. Wow. Yeah, I think. Yeah, 
something, something, it's something, yeah, it's an intimate mental illness in a fun way. <laughs> except for when it's horrific. It, except where you don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah, yeah. I found myself crying on the streets in New York in the ghetto with my face in the snow because of this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, God. I, I won't tell, I won't, we don't have to talk about who, who, you you've kissed and, and not told, but 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 what moments have have you, have been bottom moments for you in the L O V E department? I mean, I know you've run away, which I have too. But do you have a moment like that, like face in the snow, kind of? <laughs> uh, no, I never, I never. I don't think there was snow around when, <laughs> wherever Wrong. I was. No, there wasn't. I don't know. I bet you anybody listening to this is all had their own places and <laughs> do what they do, and and you know, and then you know you're going to get over it, and then but that doesn't help, right? And you just sort of die some a little bit. I don't know. It's supposed to be a positive thing, but I don't want to be one of those people that won't love because it's going to hurt possibly. Mm. You know, yeah. You just, still you still go through this stuff? Oh, or? Yeah, are you kidding? Yeah. yeah? We, oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it strange? Yes. It just does. It doesn't stop. It gets sort of worse, actually. <laughs> oh, really? Why is that? Uh, we'll see, are we, should we be talking about this? <laughs> Only if you want to. You don't have to. You can say as much as you I want. I didn't mean to get on. Did I get on? No, I you like, did. This is, I like talking about things that aren't you know, like, okay. professional. Right. It's up to you. Okay. How much you want to say. What? Right. Wait, yeah, I was just asking you. What? It's worse now for you? Lo love issues are worse now for some I don't reason? know why or else it just... Uh, it's like, what? I'm still... <laughs> falling in love and still getting wrecked or hurting somebody what this can't be and but it you know yeah yeah but yeah then you write a play or a song or which doesn't help at all but <laughs> <laughs> they say it's supposed to <laughs> well, we get, uh, it does uh, something for it it channels that yeah, they, all that channel stuff. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Anyway, it's, I don't know, I had a shrink once. I said, well, you have to be maybe a little more selective, Paul, and don't fall in love with some crazy person. I was for a while just fascinated by people who just came out of insane asylums, <laughs> and I didn't even know they did. Uh, yeah. Oh, and you just uh, attracted I, yourself. I, then I found out, you know, that. It's... Well, isn't the. Uh, I, I have to put it this way, but maybe it's not this for you at all, but the lovemaking sometimes is better with people that are crazy. I mean, when I'm in a crazy state, it's, <laughs> it's really intense. <laughs> There's a need there in that place. Well, and, and if intensity is very important in every aspect of your life. Right. If it ain't intense, it's like, then don't bother. <laughs> it's got to be intense, you know? <laughs> Whatever it is, right? It, really, it's really yeah. true. It has to be intense. I. That's why, you know, going to the theater ha for the audience and the performers and the designers and the, the directors, it has to be intense. Right. And, you know, when, no phony, not, nothing phony, no mm -hmm. phony intense. Yeah. That's really boring. Right. Phony anything is really boring. Right, Just, right. Yeah. Are you, when you're right. directing, are you tough? Like, how tough are you? I mean, I'm not you, tough at all. I love actors. Right. I love lighting people. I love musicians. So it's all just like playing. Yeah. And I have total respect for all of us. So, mm -hmm. no, I'm not tough at all. Mm -hmm. You know, unless somebody cheats or does something right <clears throat> sort of like a mistake i'll just say why are you doing that right but, th but as a guide still just to help i'm just there to help mm. and i have a vision of what i think how i'd like it to be and that's the director i guess mm. you know yeah just to yeah. yeah because some directors are like the center of it you know they're like so some directors are known to have even bigger egos than actors, right? I mean, some yeah. of them out there, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't, I've heard about them, and 
But, yeah, no, I just, no, I go back to playing. I just like to play, have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Let, you can yeah. accomplish an awful lot. Yeah, life. let's bring it back to viola to the beginning for a second. Viola, what did you, what was the, I mean, play, what is play? And well, is there a moment with viola that was particularly memorable? That's such a, I, I should be the one to be able to answer that. <laughs> Um, the, it's just again you listen to your intuition uh, listen to the other person kind of read them if you're improvising just sort of wonder what they're feeling you know and sort of go for it mm. uh, in, in an improvisation and it's it's the, it's the thing with any theater, you know, what are you doing there? What are you, where are you? What are you doing there? What do you want to accomplish? Um, but the, people have to be talented. That's right. the, that's what, the rub. What is talented? That That is the rub. Someone who has like great instincts and know how to do it and know how to, they just instinctively know how to move, instinctively uh, can read people. Instinct, it's all instinctively know things, right? You know, and then that's a, a talent. Bam, <laughs> bam. They just, you know, the great ones. You just say, why don't you just sort of walk over there and, and you know, like Shay, a star, one of the women in the shoot. You just tell her to walk across the stage, and you lose your breath. It's so exciting. <laughs> you don't tell her how to do it. Right. You just tell her walk, walk, go, walk uh -huh. over. And, it's, and then the band gets excited and the violin follows her and she looks at the audience and it's amazing. You know, I mean, they have to be really talented. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And then Viola Spolin, was there a moment with her that was like, you remember that moment for the rest of your life? Yes. We were doing a little short play in the Young Actress Company or something, and we were like, I think, well, first of all, we were about 10 years old or 11 years old, but we were playing sailors in a submarine. And we had to draw cars or something to see one of us had to stay behind. And, and my character got the card that had to stay behind, who sort of freaks out. And is left alone, and so the and then I don't know somehow the curtain comes down, and I couldn't get out of that feeling. And Viola Spolin ran around outside the front of the theater, round to backstage, and grabbed me, and she said, "Drop it, it's over." <laughs> and you go, "Oh, okay." <laughs> but you want to, you know, you tend to as a very young person or a self-indulgent actor, you want to kind of carry it with you and take it home and <laughs> right. cook dinner style. for your family and be this crazy person. That's, that's so, it's really not mentally healthy. So just right. drop it. So that was one of the great things. <sighs> but I mean, uh, she uh, everything, just everything, who I am sitting here fighting a cold is uh, because of her. You know what I mean? And... Every, every you mean in life too I mean. yeah in life oh it's totally everything yeah yeah when i improvise all day long and not in a dishonest way but i listen to who i'm talking to you know and yeah it cha yeah you can't get out of it once you do it because there's something very honest about it Unless you're trying to make a joke in, during an improvisation, that's against the rules, mm -hmm. right? Of course. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, play, play, and, and interact. Uh, you know, uh, this guy's great. He's sitting there, and you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they, he's, they are he's, sound and engineer. He's, like, he's, he's all involved, and in we're doing. This is it. <laughs> Yeah, this is it. This, this is, is it. it. You know, this is right. I could sit here and talk about nothing and everything forever. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
<laughs> it's fun. It's fun. But then we're going to get hungry. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah, we're, yeah, we got to go eat. I know. Then, <laughs> Otherwise, we talk for another hour out here. Right. We'll say. And, and so well, we're, we're, we're going to run. This is amazing. Well, I appreciate you coming in here. And, and I think we got some exciting stuff ahead. And I'm looking forward to continuing to yeah. get to know all the cool stuff. Y- yeah. And exactly. We got a lot today. I'm going to listen back to this one. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. Awesome. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I enjoyed Amazing. every second of it. Amazing. Oh, I think we're going to hear this. Ready? What? Here we go. This has been Electric Lodge Presents Notes from the Underground with Josh Berkowitz. We hope you enjoyed and tune in next time. Recorded live from Soul Journey Studios in Venice Beach, California. 